have you got any uh, new injuries to worry about? Any team news? How, how's the squad looking after your midweek game? Uh, the only person at the minute, obviously, we'll assess them. They come in today, Tom. So um, the assessments and stuff this morning. Uh, the only one that we're just waiting a little bit on is Adriana Leon. She she went down with the flu the other day. Um, so we're just obviously monitoring her. Um, she could be back in today, just depending on how she feels. But apart from that, everybody else is is fit and healthy. Okay, and, and Manchester City now on a, a nine-game winning run in all competitions. What have you made of their recent form, and just how how difficult will it be on on Sunday? Look, obviously, look, Manchester City have the capability to be able to go on the run like that. I think was it was it Chelsea the last one they lost to. Um, and I think if you look at ours in terms of league as well, Chelsea was the last one we lost to. So um, it will be a, an interesting kind of um, summary and, and kind of event to see where we're at. But yeah, look, look, Tom, I, I, I have a lot of respect for you know our neighbours and, and what they do and what they've achieved. But that, that, that comes into us just planning extra and planning harder and, and making sure we do our business. So... Um, regardless, I think as much as we, we know Manchester City can go on our run, we, we have to make sure we put performance in that can, that can try and stop that. And away from home, it's not a fixture that the United have had much success in over the years. Are you, how much do you want to change that for the supporters? Look, absolutely. But I think more importantly, Tom, I want to see that, that continued growth from us. So, you know, these, these stats only exist until they're broken, right? So... For me, it's um, look. We know how difficult it would be. We know where we're playing at. So obviously, we're playing at the Etihad. So a lot of fans. But but for us, the experiences we've had, even in the recent past, uh, will hopefully build us up for what we want to do. And uh, Tom, we have to go into this game and perform. Like there's no doubt about it. You know, there'll be nerves. There'll be nerves from both teams. But we have to try and play our football as quickly as possible, and get into our rhythm as quickly as possible. And if we do that, then you know any of these um, these these kind of statistics can crumble at any point right so you know we have to make sure that we put ourselves in the best performance framework and mindset to be able to to try and do that on this Sunday thanks Mark thank thanks you mate much. keep warm Tom thank you Jamie on to you next mate um, you mentioned Mad City Farm already um, you played them quite a bit last season but they've had quite a lot of player turnover since then does that make it any more difficult to prepare for this one having maybe coming up against players that you haven't before yeah look and also a derby James you know it, it becomes a different game you know it, it, it relies on momentum it relies on uh, moments we know both teams in this game will have spells of possession spells of chances so it, it's a slightly different game regardless of form regardless of history um, and results so yeah look it'll be it'll be tough like, I think Gareth has actually you know for all the all the players that have lost I think he's He's got the team that he wants. He's recruited the team that he wants. So, um, yeah, look, we're, we're playing Gareth's team now. So I think it's really important that we, you know, put a performance in and focus on what we can do. We know how, how we know their players have a lot of qualities, but so do we. So I'm hopeful it will be a, a really exciting one for everyone to watch. And then just in terms of this being at a big stadium, this is your third game. You know, there's going to be a huge crowd for the last, um, in the last few weeks. What kind of experience does that give you, especially considering that City haven't done that this season? I think their last big game was last season's FA Cup final. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. It's hugely important because, you know, one more importantly, Jamie, I've watched our team perform in those those um, venues in front of those fans. So, you know, when we go into this game, we can literally look back three or four weeks and have two experiences of that. So I think it's important that we use that, we utilise that as much as possible. Look, Manchester City would be galvanised by their fans, but if we can turn it the other way and, and perform straight from the off, you know, you can try and quieten those fans and then it becomes, you know, momentum shifting your way. So we have to try and do that. We know how difficult that will be. And all I can say is that we have to focus on, on how we want to perform in this game and, and try and minimise their qualities and maximise ours. And then just finally, would you say then that you've learned, say, over the last nine months because you've scored uh, first against Arsenal, first against Aston Villa, but you conceded quite early against Everton at Old Trafford last season? I think, do you know what, we've, we've grown as a collective, uh, Jamie, massively. So, um, you, know, you, you know, statistics would say that we score first, we go on and win games and all of that. But actually, the reality is we're, we're, we're putting that into a performance, right? We're, we're scoring first because we're performing to score first. So 
it's not about <laughs> I'd love to be able to tell you when we're going to score in this game so well that's not the reality so we have to experience everything um, and just grow from that but if we score first then we have to you know we have to try and win the game regardless so we just have to keep working at our qualities maximizing our potential and that's what we'll do in this game it's no different I know it's a huge kind of occasion but it's no different to our practice principles that we do in everyday training Right, best of luck in the weekend. Thank you, mate. Great to speak yes. to you. Jamie, thank you, Graham. Over to you next. <clears throat> Hi, Mark. How are you doing? Right? Good morning, mate. How are you doing? Really? Good time. man, good I'm man. Most <laughs> 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 obviously a really good uh, performance during the week against Everton. You talked about um, players sort of earning their place and, and being there on merit. Coming off the back of a, a 5 0 win in the league, how much of a headache does that give you when choosing your team coming to Sunday? Enough to be able to have to take tablets, right? It's um, no, it's it's in all joking aside, it's um, a very good problem to have. Um, I've always said the hardest part is selecting the team, but but the reality is, and 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 it's clear internally, my players know that I never doubt them for a second. The reality is, Graham, that I'm trying to strike a balance between attack, defence. Uh, how we do that, the, the variances of the game, the planning for the game, should we need to change. Um, there's much more than coming in than just, oh, this player plays in that position, let, 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 let's go with that. Um, there's much more thinking, much more analysis. So for us, like, for example, Vilda Barisa, oh, we know Vilda can do that. But, you know, there's also a balance on the other side of the game that we're working hard with Vilda to achieve. So um, I'm happy with the performance. I'm happy. I'm not happy we went out of the cup. But I'm happy with the performance. It shows, it shows the growth as a whole collective. You saw the way they celebrate. It was a complete team regardless of nine changes, right? So I think that those are more important signs than, than you know, any individual part within that game. And coming up to the game on Sunday, obviously, Bonnie shows that the top scorer in the league at the moment. She offers something really different to maybe what the rest of the league has. How do you go about sort of... Um, taking on that challenge and, and, and you have to set up differently for that kind of player I think you have to be aware of her you know physically she's 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 excellent in terms of the qualities that she has uh, the way she strikes the ball um, what I think you maybe have to do Graham is make sure if she doesn't touch the ball as much and you can kind of stifle her play try and keep her out of the positions that she wants to be in where she's deadly um, then I think you can maximise your return on that but you know, there's going to be times where we have to rely on individuals, times when we def defend as a team. Um, but more importantly, you can defend with the ball as well. So if she never touches the ball as much, you know, is she? Then we have to test her concentration, all of those things. But she's very much a handful, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be going to be looking to a team and individuals to step up to make sure we we try and maximise our qualities. We've been very good at keeping clean sheets as well, Graham, so uh, it should be a, a good challenge for us. And just finally, um, we're two games away from January, we touched on going in the window the other day. Um, I don't think it's a loss on anyone, obviously there's a few players that the contract finishes in, in the summer and you touched on it last year the other week. Is there any update on that or, or how close are you to agreeing anything? The, no, the, the talks are continuing. Uh, there's no update right now, um, but we're working hard behind the scenes to make that happen um, and as I, sa I said this before that these contract talks take a while it's not you know with the ever increasing uh, popularity and increase in the game um, we are you know you, everything just takes a little bit longer and you're trying to future proof these conversations too so for us we're designing a team that wants to compete in this league so you know we are we are working hard to make sure that happens and as soon as we have any updates we'll make sure we give you them Mark, thanks so much and good luck on Sunday. Thank you, mate. Have a good day. Great, thank you. <coughs> Meg, on to you next, please. Hi, Mark. Hope you're well. I'm good, Meg. How are you? Yeah, not bad, thank you. Um, good, so, the Emirates last month, Old Trafford on Saturday, the Etihad on Sunday. What sort of a statement is that for women's football and the journey that it's on at the minute? I think more importantly, Meg, I think it was the amount of people that turned up for those, those venues and those facilities. And... You know, we were we were fortunate enough to put on two really good performances in those stadiums. So I'm hoping we can make that another one. Uh, you know, at the Etihad. But look, it's a huge statement for our game. It's a huge statement for the the clubs and the work that they're doing, and the players and the work that people want to keep coming to see. 
So, you know, it's, it's, it's wonderful. And look, we, we hope this is just the start, Meg, right? We hope that we can continue this and our job is to help sure that make sure we uh, play part in that, huge part. Um, but yeah, it's magnificent. As, as, a, as a coach stepping into these, these wonderful stadiums with full, like, well, quite a lot of people within there, it's, it's, it's a great feeling. And Man City, you know, got some really good results this season, scoring lots of goals, exactly like you have as well. So it'll be a real balance of, you know, a te- both teams have lots of players that can score goals. What's that sort of going to be like, balancing that out? Probably crazy, right? Um, but no, look, it's 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 part of the game, and derbies are usually different because there's a little bit of caginess, there's a little bit of nerves. You know, we're against our our rivals, so. We just need to make sure we get into performance mode as quickly as possible, forget the occasion and play the game. Um, so, you know, it sounds cliche when a coach talks about that, but actually there are parameters we can put in place to do that. You know, how we set up, how we start, um, how we stifle their, the opposition, um, you know, and so for us, it's just about controlling those, those parameters and, and that's what we're going to do in this game. And finally, obviously, it's a derby. Do you expect it to be a physical game in some way, shape or form? I mean, probably, yeah. Uh, probably. And I'd, I'd hope that we put the necessary physicality on the game. Um, you know, nobody ever wants to hurt anybody, but actually, these are derbies, so we have to make sure that we're competitive. I'm sure Manchester City will say the same, but, yeah, look, we have to be there in spirit, in body, in mind, in everything. So that's what I'm asking our team to do, and... We've performed excellently this this part of the year. Honestly, we've been we've been the growth in our team, the performances, the amount of goals we scored, the clean sheets. We've been excellent. So we have to make sure we put a really huge effort into this game too, and I'm sure we will. Thank you, Mark, and good luck on Sunday. Thank you, Meg. Good to speak to you, mate. Meg, thank you, Amy. On to you next, please. Hey, Mark. How are you? They only roll you out for the big games, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, we, we always, you know, there's a lot that can be said about tactics and, you know, team selection and form and everything, but how much kind of desire is there just generally within the team to get one over Man City after a recent run of results against them? I think more importantly, Amy, we've got a lot of Manchester United fans in our team. So I think there's a, there's a deep core of this being real for them um, for me I like whenever I go to a team regardless of you know obviously I'm born in Birmingham but but for me I embody and encapsulate everything about the team that I'm at so for me I'm Manchester United through and through um, and so what we want to do here is is maximize what we can do in this game but yeah look we, we this is real for people right and this is for Manchester City fans as well as it is Manchester United fans but but Amy, we'd be stupid to think that we can just work our way emotionally through the game. There's too ma- too many good players on show to be able to do that. So we gotta have a balance. And if we strike the balance, whoever strikes the balance right, I think we'll control the game. And and there's gonna be moments in, in this game where Man City will have the ball and be on top, and then moments when we have. Who manages that the best that will uh, that will get the result? Does that make it easier when players come in that maybe don't know so much about the derby or you just try to drill it into them what it means like because you've got so many Man United fans around? Yeah, I mean, honestly, you don't have to drill it. it, it it's present. It's, it's in everything that you do. It's a huge game. Everybody looks forward to it. It's probably the first one you look for on the you know, on the schedule list when it comes out. So, yeah, look, it's, it's huge. It, everybody knows it. But the reality is... Our players are starting to get used to playing in big occasions and that's, you know, I talked about last year when, you know, we faced a disappointment about the experiences gained and unless you experience it, you don't really grow from it. So good, bad or indifferent, you know, we learn from those experiences and we have to put that into this. This is going to be a hopefully great for everybody to watch, but for us, we're going to make sure we, we try and give every amount of energy for our fans in inside as long as the referee allows. Thanks, Mark. Good luck. Thank you, mate. Amy, thank you. Bill, on to you next, please. Hi, Mark. Good to speak to you. Thank you. Um, Are you going on Xbox after this, Bill? A Xbox? Yeah, it's a that's, great that's headset, how I mate. I spend my weekends, to be honest. If um, you wait till after training, hook me up and we'll get a game on. I'll send you a code. We'll have good a man, good season. man. Um, Mark, in terms of sort of this season so far, at the end of the last campaign, 
you talked about wanting to close that gap, your ambition to qualify for the Champions League. I know that will be ultimately shown in the league table at the end of the season, but considering the start you've had, do you feel you are closing that gap on, on the other top teams? Yeah, I do, I do believe that, Bill. And, and the reason I believe that is we're scoring the goals that we're scoring, the amount of goals, the different goal scorers, the amount of clean sheets we're keeping again, which we did well last year. Um, but more importantly, I think the way that the teams that have historically been above us see us, I think, has adapted and has changed. And I think look, it always helps getting the, the win against Arsenal. Um, and that was probably a bigger psychological than just the three points that we got. But this game's different. You know, Manchester City have no right to, to respect us. They're, I'm pretty sure they respect the players that we have, but they're not going to go in and over respect us. So we have to earn that right. And so for us, we're going to go into this game and just try and impart every bit of energy, every bit of kind of brains, every bit of emotion, every bit of quality. And if we put all that into a nice melting pot, then we can create something that we, we can get to a level where we can challenge uh, these three teams historically on every game that we play against them. But we've got to get to that level, Bill, and that's why I'm going to ask the team uh, this weekend. And I know you've kind of alluded to it already. Uh, Manchester United women's only sort of been around in the current form for just over four years, four and a half years. You've beaten Manchester City in <coughs> cup games in that time. Yeah. How big psychologically would a win in the in the WSL be? Do you think? Look, it'd be huge. I think it'd be the same as Arsenal, right? In terms of we were close with Arsenal last year, we drew a game that we should have won, um, and so yeah, we've beat them in the cup. But you know, cups can be different. We all know that. So yeah, look, it'd be huge, especially in front at the Etihad in front of all, you know the Manchester City fans. Um, but we have, and I'll, I'll reiterate this: we have no given right to do that. We have to earn this. Um, my team will earn everything that they get and we've, we started historically in terms of the time we've been around behind the other three but what a great time to show just our growth as a team as on Sunday I want to get us right into performance mode quickly and use the energy of the crowd against them if we can um, but we know it's going to be difficult we've just got to be we've got to try and be our very best Bill and we're probably a little bit biased um, you and I but there are, there are a number of big fixtures in this division now, but this one, because of the locality and, and the, the supporters that will turn out en masse, this is about as big as it gets, isn't it? I, I think it's probably the biggest, right? I think it's, you know, our fans will love playing against uh, Arsenal and Chelsea, of course, um, but yeah, this is, this is the derby, so it's a huge game for both teams, um, but I'm hoping our team have shown their big game mentality. And I, I, we know we will work today, we'll work tomorrow, and we'll continue to work on our mentality going forward on playing in games like this. Because as the game grows, as we just alluded to, then it's going to be part of what we do. So it's a huge, huge game, um, but we've got to try and maximise the control as much as possible. We talked in the summer about sort of the women's Euros and what a big impact that had in, in attracting new eyes to women's football and, and bringing that into the, the new domestic season as well. With the Men's World Cup going on at the moment, is, is there just a, a general bit of buzz around football at the moment? I mean, I know your camp will be obsessed with it anyway, but everyone seems to talk a bit more when there's a major tournament on, don't they? Yeah, they do. And, and you know, like, like especially with the men doing well as well. So, you know, tough game obviously against France coming up, but... But if it's the buzz about football, like we talk about trying to make football not, nothing to do with gender, right? And I think it's a sport that we can all love. It's a sport that everybody can get involved with. Um, it's not poetic to say that. It's just actually, look, it, it's about loving a sport. It's about loving the camaraderie. The things that I've learned from sport, from team sport, and football's given us that, the teamwork, how, to, how, how you evolve in society is part of the microcosm of football, right? So for us, I think it's important. Look, we, we wish the men all the best. We hope that they come back and, and, and you know, if they can win the World Cup and the women to win the Euros in the same year, that's a buzz for English football and anyone involved within it. So you know, we wish them all the very best this weekend. Brilliant stuff. All the best for Sunday, mate. Thank, thank, you, thank you, mate. I'll speak to you later online. Bill, thank <laughs> you. Phil, we'll come to you next, please. Hello. Hello, Phil. Good to see you, mate. 
You too, you too. Uh, just one from me. Um, you talked uh, earlier on about uh, this sort of sense of closing the gap. Um, I mean, obviously you were you were around the top of the league for part of last season, um, but perhaps this time it feels like sort of even more of a sort of proper title challenge rather than just a push for a Champions League place. Uh, I just guess in terms of the bigger picture, do, do you think the team is ahead of what was expected ahead of schedule uh, in terms of, sort of being at this level at this moment in time or... or or would it be sort of more accurate to say that a proper title push this season was always kind of viewed as a, as a realistic thing? It's always our plan, right? Because regardless, as a as a, I'm human, so the the need to want something right now is always going to be present. So regardless, so I think we're slightly ahead in terms of. Um, I've seen the growth. I've seen the mature. I'm still we're still recruiting in this team, Phil. You know, I've still got adaptations to this team going forward that I, in order to get it to where I want it to be, um, where I think we can compete on a consistent basis. Um, but I've seen already accelerated lines, accelerated um, attitudes, accelerated personalities from the group. Um, and so, yeah, look, for us, about we want to create a sustainable winning kind of model, and we have to do that by performance. Um, and that's what we try and maximise. So, yeah, I think we're... We're probably slightly ahead, but n- only because it's been earned, Phil. Only because it's been earned by the players. That's all, cheers. Thank you, mate. Phil, thank you. And we'll end with Keith, please. Hey, mate, how you doing? Mate, you're a good-looking fella. <laughs> Honestly, you are. That beard, you've got the you've got the perfect hot Santa look, I think. <laughs> Honestly. You know what? That is what I needed to hear this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've heard it, mate. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Um, just quickly, you touched on it earlier um, to one of the other questions about the attendances. There was a report out this morning, I don't know if you saw it, or I know you've been busy this morning. The WSL uh, fixture, sorry, the attendances are up 20% from last year. Sorry, That's 200% right. from last year on the back of the Euros success. I mean, obviously, we expected attendances to go up, but by 200%, it's an unbelievable number when you look at it like that. How do you how do you see it as a whole, and how much of a boost is that to the, the sport? I mean, I was, I was amazed when you said 20%, so to say yeah, 200%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah look, for me, that's huge. And do you know what? The other night, so we played Everton, and it was freezing. Um, and I think we had 1,500 fans that braved like the minus kind of weather just to come and watch the team play so like it's brilliant it, it really is and, and that's why you know look Keith we feel we feel a responsibility in terms of to put performances on that keep growing this you know if that can even be 400% in the future it's got to be to get anywhere near to filling these stadiums that we want to fill we have to keep that number doubling and, and quadrupling so for us, it's, it's, it's a privilege to play in front of more people. But I think more importantly, Keith, I think it shows the quality of the, 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 quality of the league and the quality of everybody within the league trying to push the standards. Just finally, you, you mentioned the, the England-France game uh, for, for the men tomorrow. I know obviously you've got an early start on Sunday, but will you be will you be getting together to watch it? Is there any plans for that? Yeah, absolutely. Look, I mean, um, we're, we're trying to finalise those now, but yeah, look, it'll be a, it'll be a wonderful event, and you know, everybody here has not stopped watching the World Cup anyway, even though they're still playing. So um, it's hard for me because. You know, our focus has been on a three-game week, and but but I will after this game, and once we focus on everything we need to do in this game, I'll be watching with my uh, my England very much supporters hat on.